match indeed. Hello, I'm Alexander Armstrong and welcome to Pointless, the show where the aim of the game is to score as few points as you can and you do that by coming up with the answers no one else could think of. Let's meet today's players. <laughs> and couple number one. Hi, I'm Catherine. This is my sister Kirsten and we're from Edinburgh. Couple number two. Hi, I'm Mark. This is my friend Jim and we're both students at the University of Warwick. Couple number three. Hi, I'm Erin. This is my mum's partner, Dave, and we've come from London and Coventry. And couple number four. Good day. I'm Dave from York and from Hampshire. We have Richard, known to the world as Dicky. And these are today's contestants. <laughs> Thanks very much, all of you. We'll find out more about you throughout the show as it goes along. So that just leaves one more person for me to introduce. He's got a thirst for knowledge, but he'll also drink dandelion and burdock. It's my pointless friend. <laughs> it's Richard. Hiya. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Hiya. Good afternoon to you. And to you. How are you? I'm very well. I tell you what, though, and this, I hope I'm not breaking a terrible confidence here. We do sometimes pre record these shows, they don't go out live. I know, I know, I know. Are you kidding me? No, 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 sometimes we do. So when people watch this, it might be in, it might be in spring or it might be in high summer, you yeah. never know. We are recording this. I don't know if you can see my breath there. <laughs> I'm going to say it's fresh in it the studio It is quite cold, today. isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it is. Some days you can walk in and it's fine. Some yeah. days you walk in and it's like someone's left a massive door open. Well, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm just going to say, because by the end of the show, when I have sort of a beard and bits of icicle <laughs> hanging off it, yeah. I just want to let people know that's why. It is a bit like the recreation of Shackleton's last voyage, isn't it, this? Yeah, a little bit. It's very just similar. A bit. And let's take a look at our crew mates. Yes. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? <laughs> I like that. Uh, but we told me in our contestants. Yeah, very good. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Uh, two returning players, Jim and Mark, did very well last time, got all the way through to the uh, through to the head-to-head. -head. But Dickie and Dickie and Dave, less so. Knocked out first round. Dave, who, as we learnt last time, uh, used to be a Viking. Yeah. I think that's what the V stands for. Dave Viking. Yeah, yeah I think so. Could yeah, be, yeah. yeah I think so. That's quite fun, isn't it? Um, <laughs> now round one today. Yeah. Uh, it's a sort of round that everyone's going to be scared of, but actually I think when you actually play the round, you think, oh, you might surprise yourself. OK. Thanks very much indeed. Now, as usual, all of today's questions have been asked to 100 people before the show. Our contestants are on the hunt for those all-important pointless answers, the answers none of our 100 people gave, and each time that happens, we will add £250 to the jackpot. Now, Hayley and Loz didn't win the jackpot last time, so we add another £1,000 to that. So today's jackpot starts off at £2,500. <laughs> right, if everyone's ready, let's play Pointless. <laughs> OK, the pair with the highest score at the end of the round will be eliminated, and also, please remember, there is to be no conferring during the round. OK, our first category is... Literature. Literature. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and the question concerns... Shakespeare quotations. Shakespeare quotations. Richard. On each pass, we're going to show you seven Shakespeare quotations, but we've left out one word from each one. Can you tell us what that word is, please? The more obscure answer you give, of course, the lower your score is going to be. There's going to be 14 in all to have a go at home, so very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed. OK, so we are looking for the missing word which completes each of these Shakespeare quotations. And here's our first board of seven. Full fathom blank, thy father lies, the tempest. A blank by any other name would smell as sweet, Romeo and Juliet. Now is the blank of our discontent, Richard III. Is this a blank which I see before me, Macbeth? As blank to wanton boys are we to the gods, King Lear. Alas, poor blank, I knew him, Horatio, Hamlet. Once more, unto the blank, dear friends, once more, Henry V. I'm going to read those all one more time. Full fathom blank, thy father lies, the tempest. A blank by any other name would smell a sweet, Romeo and Juliet. Now is the blank of our discontent, Richard III. Is this a blank which I see before me, Macbeth? As blank to wanton boys are we to the gods, King Lear. Alas, poor blank, I knew him, Horatio, Hamlet. And once more, unto the blank, dear friends, once more, Henry V. Kirsten and Catherine, you all drew lots before the show, and today you are going to go first. Kirsten, welcome to Pointless. Thank you. Um, what do you do, Kirsten? Um, I'm a student at Glasgow University. OK, from Edinburgh? From Edinburgh. At Glasgow. Yeah. How, what year are you in? Um, I'm in fourth year. Fourth year? Yeah, I'm okay. studying veterinary medicine, um, but I'm interclating with zoology at the moment. Um, what do you like getting up to in your spare time? Um, I really love music, so I try to go and see a lot of live bands and DJs around Glasgow. Excellent. How's your Shakespeare? 
It's average, I'd say. But I think I know a couple of them on the board. I'm just trying to figure out which is going to be best. I think I'm going to risk it. I'm going to say um, the Hamlet quotation is alas, poor Horrock. Alas, poor Horrock. Yeah. Says Kirsten, alas, poor Horrock. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Horrock. Kirsten. <laughs> I'm afraid <laughs> that's an incorrect answer. I'm really sorry. Um, it scores you the maximum of 100 points. Sorry, Kirsten, often tough on that first podium. Uh, I'll give you the correct answer at the end of the pass. Thanks very much indeed. Mark, welcome back. Welcome back. Now, you are an undergraduate at the University of Warwick. Yes. Remind us what you do there. I'm studying economics. And what do you get up to in your spare time there? Um, at Warwick, I do a lot of theatre and a bit of singing. Um, I sing in an a cappella group, actually. Um, oh, do you? Yeah. What sort of size group? Um, there are 13 of us. But when you perform around the university, do you? Or... Yeah, yeah, we performed just yesterday, in fact. Um, we had a little thing. Little Jim, concert. did you go along? I didn't, unfortunately. No, oh, I was... That was loyal. Good. <laughs> Good. Uh, any, any particular pressing reason why I was, not? I was in a rehearsal for another show at the time, so... Okay. I, I was there in spirit. Well, Mark, that's a show you can miss as well. Good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so then, Mark, what about all these Shakespeare quotes? I think you're probably going to know all of them. <laughs> um, safe to say I don't know all of them. Um, Jim is pretty solid on his Shakespeare. So I'm just going to go with the safe one. I think I'm going to go with, is this a dagger which I see before me, Macbeth? Is this a dagger which I see before me? Let's see if that's right. If it is, let's see how many people said dagger. <laughs> 38. <laughs> Very well done, Mark. 38 for dagger. Yeah, said by Macbeth himself, of course. We said Macbeth an awful lot of times, not supposed to. Oh, no. It's supposed to bring a chill upon the studio, isn't it, if you say They yeah, do back. say yes. <laughs> uh, thanks very much indeed, Richard. Now then, Erin, welcome to the show. Thank Great you. to have you here. Um, what do you do, Erin? Um, I actually work in cricket. I work with the England team and a lot of the former England players. That's fun. Yeah. That is great. How long have you done that for? Um, for three summers now. But you work with a lot of former cricketers? Yes. So what do you do for them? You... Um, so a lot of appearances they might do for sponsors, that kind of thing. Okay. And also we provide a team of former players that will take on local clubs and schools, okay. that kind of thing. And quite a lot of charitable work, obviously. Exactly, as well. yeah. Fantastic. Um, how are we feeling about this, this board? Um, I'm going to have to go the one that, if it's right, will be the highest scoring and say a rose by any other name would smell as sweet. A rose by any other name. Well, I can guarantee it's not going to be quite as high scoring as as one answer we've had, but uh, we'll find out. A rose, is that right? And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said rose. It's right. Well, 38, oh, 68 is what you score there. Yes, so by Juliet in the, the famous balcony scene, of course. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Now, Dave V. Hello. Dave V. The V doesn't stand for Viking, obviously. It doesn't, no. Oh, that'd be too good to be true. Uh, what does it stand for? It stands for Vale. Vale. Oh, second name. Dave Vale. That's a good name. Dave, Dave vale. vale. And he plays in a medieval rock band. I, I used to. Long, long He was time. sacked from a medieval <laughs> rock band. <laughs> quite recently. Um, I played the drums. Yes. Dave Vale. Dave <laughs> Vale. <laughs> Did you ever do that? You should have. Oh, constantly. Good. <laughs> and that... Do you oh. ever, when you drummed, did you ever have a hat with horns on? Should've... I didn't, know. I missed a trick. He'd, he'd look great. He'd become a hat with horns on. Yeah, no wonder you got fired. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now then, Dave. Hello. Dave. Um, what are you going to... This, this board's all yours. Do you, do, you, do you fancy having a punt at any uh, of them? I'm, I'm a, um, I think it's full fathom foul thy father lies from time, but I'm not sure about that. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York. And I think it's as playthings to Wanton Boys we are to the gods. But again, I'm not sure about that. Uh, it's the last poor Yorick I knew in Horatio. But I'm going to go for the last one. Once more onto the breach, dear friend, once more. I'll close the wall up with our English dead. Well, oh, look at that, English dead. <laughs> Was that one of your songs? <laughs> English dead. <laughs> English dead. Uh, Davey says, uh, once more onto the breach. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said that. Fifty-nine. Well done. <laughs> Fifty-nine for breach. 
Yes, yeah, said by Henry V himself, of course. I think everyone uh, taking advantage there of poor Kirsten's one-letter uh, mistake <laughs> to, to, to go for the obvious answers. It is Yorick, not Horrick. Um, and that would have scored you 50 points. Um, now, it's not Full Fathom Foul, do you know that one? Five. Full Fathom Five, absolutely. Uh, and that would have scored you nine points. Now is the winter our discontent. Yep. Which is the third, that would have scored 47. Now, it's not as playthings to wanton boys. Flies. As flies to wanton boys are we to the gods. Five points for that. So that's the best answer up there. Well done if you said that. Thanks very much indeed. Richard, OK, well, we're halfway through the round. Let's take a look at those scores as they stand. 38, the best score of that pass, Mark. Very well done. And we've still got Jim, the Shakespeare expert, to come. So we're expecting great things. <laughs> Listen, no pressure, Jim. Not at all. Um, I believe. Uh, then up to 59, where we find Dave Vale and Dickie. Then up to 68, where we find Erin and Dave H. And then up to 100, where we find Kirsten and Catherine. Anything might happen in the next pass, Catherine. Yeah. Best of luck. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? <laughs> OK, we're going to put seven more Shakespeare quotes on the board, and here they come. We've got the slings and blank of outrageous fortune, Hamlet. He will come to her in blank stockings, Twelfth Night. Oh, brave new blank the tempest, if blank be the food of love, Twelfth Night. This royal throne of kings, this blank isle, Richard II, beware the blank of March, Julius Caesar. Out, out, brief blank, life's but a walking shadow, Macbeth. I'll read those all again. The slings and blank of outrageous fortune, Hamlet. He will come to her in blank stockings, Twelfth Night. O brave new blank, the tempest. If blank be the food of love, Twelfth Night. This royal throne of kings, this blank isle, Richard II. Beware the blank of March, Julius Caesar. And out, out, brief blank, life's but a walking shadow, Macbeth. Now, Dickie, remember we are looking for the missing words in each of these quotes from Shakespeare, and you're going to try and find the one you think the fewest of our 100 people knew. Now, Dickie. Yes. You and Dave are celebrating 20 years of close friendship. Yes. Um, what, what are some of the things you've done? And obviously you're appearing on Pointless as part of these ongoing celebrations. The whole year is given up to this. I um, did not know that. Yeah, 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 yes. yeah, yeah. Oh, no, we've, we've, oh, there are street parties going to be held, certainly in, uh, <laughs> in our part of the country. Um, what else are you doing to celebrate? What, or have well, you done in this, in this anniversary year? Well, we've, we've both got really different music tastes. I mean, looking so similar, it's hard to imagine that we have, but... <laughs> Um, we thought it might be quite a nice idea to go to gigs that each other likes. That was brave. And it was, um, especially on my part. I took Dave to see Chaz and Dave earlier this year, <laughs> which uh, he really enjoyed. And then Dave took me to see a group called Hawkwind. The Hawkwind. <laughs> Is it the Hawkwind? I think it's just Hawkwind. Just, just Hawkwind, yeah, yeah. Hawkwind. <laughs> um, <laughs> they did have horns on their headwear. They did, yeah. Did they really? <laughs> they did. Yeah. Brilliant. OK, Dickie, what about these quotes? Which one of these do you want to go for? Well, I, I kind of knew that, hopefully, the Carry On films didn't let me down. Um, so I'm going to say, because I remember one of the characters saying it in Carry On Cleo, uh, beware the Ides of March. Beware the Ides of March, says Dickie. Well, you're on 59. The high score is a Catherine and Kirsten on 100. 40 or less gets you through. There's your red line. Below that, you're in round two. Let's see how many you score for the Ides of March. Sixty-one. Sixty-one takes your total up to one hundred and twenty. I think you should be all right. Yeah, it's a big scorer, though, isn't it? Yeah, that's, uh, that's uh, yeah, one hundred and twenty is a fair old score as well. Yeah, beware the Ides of March. Beware the fifteenth of March. We would say if we were talking uh, today. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Now, Dave H, welcome. You've come here from Coventry. I do. What does the H stand for? Hey, Ward. Oh, I thought you could say hail for a minute. I was going to say that would have been just but hail and veil. <laughs> um, uh, what do you do, Dave? Uh, I'm a calibration engineer working in the uh, aerospace industry. Very good. Now then, how is your Shakespeare, Dave? Uh, not a good board, to be honest. Uh, I knew, I think I know two on the board. I'm going to go for the top one, uh, the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune. The slings and arrows, says Dave. OK, well, the high scorers are Dickie and Dave over there on 120. You're on 68. 51 or less sees you through. There's your red line. Let's see if arrows is right. Let's see if it'll get Dave below the red line. 51. Yes, it will. Oh, just look at that. You needed 51. <laughs> 48 you got. 160 in your total. Well done. Or oh, as close, wasn't it? Yeah, said by Hamlet himself in the in the to be or not to be speech. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Now, Jim, 
Hello. Oh, look at that. Bushy tailed, bright eyed. Yeah. Jim. It's, great. it's like oh. it's like being in a Shakespearean seminar or something, isn't yeah. it? It's amazing. That is a man who was rehearsing a show just yesterday. Yeah. What, what's the show you were rehearsing? I'm um, rehearsing School for Scandal, the S Sheridan play. So you got all your lines learnt? More or less. Yeah. Oh, more or less. Oh. <laughs> Every director's nightmare, Jim. Oh, more or less. <laughs> It's the less bits they're worried about. Definitely. I've got a bit of a reputation for ad-libbing in shows, which is deserved, unfortunately, but, yeah, it's not great. <laughs> I like the way he said, deserved. He <laughs> <laughs> uh, suddenly came over all Cartman. It was brilliant. Uh, now, Jim, there you are on 38. You mustn't score more than 81, or we'd have to say goodbye to you, and that would be a travesty. What we need from you is a nice, low-scoring word. I was actually going to go for slings and arrows, but I'm going to go for he will come to her in yellow stockings twelfth night. Yellow stockings, says Jim. Yellow stockings, here's your red line nice and high. Let's see if yellow stockings get you below that red line. They certainly do. Very well done, Jim. <laughs> oh, look at that, nine! <laughs> Cross guard to two. 47 is your total, Jim. Well played, Jim. Very good answer. I'm one of the country's leading Twelfth Night scholars. Are you now? In, the, well, in that I did it for O-Level. Oh, yeah, so did I. Yeah, 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 yeah so did I. <laughs> that, I was thinking, yes, I know that too. Yeah, I'm pretty, I'm yeah, pretty on top yeah. of that. Oh, I remember that. about Twelfth Night. Um, OK, thank you very much indeed. Now then, Catherine, there you are. On 100, you were the high scorers. You might get through. You might get through here if you can score 19 or less. Uh, Catherine, what do you do, by the way? I'm a student at the University of St Andrews. St Andrews. Yeah. So none of you tempted to stay in Edinburgh. You wanted to get, no. get away for a bit. Just, <laughs> well, I think it's important, isn't it? Otherwise, the temptation would always just be to go home and get your washing done. <laughs> um, what do you get up to when you're, when you're not studying? I love reading, um, but <laughs> not, <laughs> this isn't not the best. Not the Shakespeare so much. <laughs> Which of these do you think? I think I know the Macbeth one. I think it's out, out, brief stains. I'm not sure, though. I'm going to go for that. Stains. Out, out, brief stains. stains. OK, brief stains, says Catherine. There's your red line. If you get below that with stains, you're through to round two. Let's see if it's right, though. And if it is, let's see how many people said stains. <gasps> oh, dear. <laughs> Bad luck, I'm afraid. That is an incorrect answer. It scores you the maximum of 100 points. It takes your total up to 200. No, not, uh, not stains, I'm afraid. It's, do you know what's an out candle. brief candle? Yeah, life is but a walking shadow. Six points as well, so would have seen you through uh, if you'd known it. Oh, brave new... Uh, world, oh, brave new world, sorry. Oh, brave new world, yep. That would have scored 69 points if... If music, be the, if music be the food of love. We knew that, obviously. Play on, give me excess of it. Or so, no. That's surfeiting the appetite, may sicken or so, so die. die. And so die. I was oh, Orsino oh. in the school play. Oh, were you? Yeah, yeah, I yeah. yeah. Seen... Wow. Yeah, I had lived a lot, though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had lived a lot. <laughs> Better than what Shakespeare could have come up with. I had a reputation was for... Was it uh, deserved? Deserved. <laughs> deserved. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Um, and the last one there, this royal throne of kings, this sceptered isle. isle. Yeah. To the second that would have scored you 26 very well done to anyone who went all the way through that board very impressive thank you very much indeed so at the end of our first round i'm afraid the pair heading home our latest members of the 200 club it's catherine and kirsten <laughs> horrick is so close to Here's bread, I love. Yeah. <laughs> well we have to say goodbye to you but we will see you again next time we look forward to that very much indeed and i promise there'll be no more shakespeare <laughs> uh thanks so much for playing catherine and kirsten But for the remaining three pairs, it's now time for round two. So, three pairs remain. Obviously, at the end of this round, we'll have to say goodbye to another pair in time for our head-to-head -head round. Well, Dickie and Dave, welcome to round two. Yeah, that's, that's what great. it looks like. Um, uh, Jim and Mark, very well done. Our lowest scoring pair there. Very good ensemble play from the pair of you. Um, and Erin and Dave, nice middling score from the pair of you, so very well done. Uh, very best of luck to all three pairs. Our category for round two is... Classic films. Classic films. Can you all decide in your pairs who's going to go first, who's going to go second? And whoever's going first, please step up to the podium. OK, and our question concerns... Ensemble casts. Ensemble casts, Richard. We're about to show you two photographs uh, from films which uh, famously had ensemble casts. One of the photographs is of The Magnificent Seven, 
and one of the photographs is of Reservoir Dogs. We need you to name any actor in either of the photographs, please. Very, very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. So we're looking for the name of anyone in either of these pictures. And here are the two images. OK. There we are. Now, Mark. This is probably about as bad as a round could possibly get for me. Um, I literally have not got a clue uh, about any of them. OK, I'm just going <laughs> to say a name. Jim, I'm really sorry, Jim. Let's go with... OK, I'm just going to say Clint Eastwood. Clint Eastwood, says Mark. Clint Eastwood. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many by 100 people said Clint Eastwood. Your bad luck, Mark. I'm afraid that's an incorrect answer. It scores you the maximum of 100 points. Sorry. Unlucky Mark, if you're going to guess, it's not a bad guess at all, but, yeah, not in, uh, not in either of those photos. Thanks very much. Now then, Erin, is this yes. any better for you? No. <laughs> <laughs> that might be a relief for Jim and Mark there. Yeah. But, uh... I have no idea. So I'm just going to guess a name. I... He's not even an actor, <laughs> but you never know. I'm literally just going to go with the name John Smith. <laughs> Oh, you're going to make up an actor yeah. as well. Yeah. Not... <laughs> wow. Uh, let's find out. John Smith. Is John Smith in either of those pictures? No, bad luck. <laughs> oh, there's a lifeline, Jim and Mark. <sighs> I'm sorry, that's, uh, that's an incorrect answer. That scores you the maximum of 100 points. But you're in good company. I thought this round would be easier than the Shakespeare round. I'm going to be, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. Mm. Uh, thanks very much. Uh, now then, Dickie. Dickie. This, at long last, I think, is going to land on fertile, fertile ground over there. No. <laughs> because it's not Carry On or James Bond. Um, I know one of the guys from Reservoir Dogs, but I just can't think of his name. Uh, <laughs> which is probably the same as everyone else. Um, I can, I can so... give, I'll give you a clue. It's not John Smith. <laughs> ah, ah that's, that's a game-changer. <laughs> In that case, no, I really... It, 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 at the moment, it could be anybody's game. I'm really not sure, so I'm going to have to say uh, Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen, says Dickie. Let's see if that's right, and if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said Steve McQueen. Ah! <laughs> Listen to that sweet music. Oh, there he is, 38. 38 for Steve McQueen. Very well done, Dickie. Yeah, that's how you guessed, Dickie. Very well played, Steve McQueen. And uh, there he is in the bottom picture. OK, thanks very much. Well, halfway through the round, let's take a look at those scores. Just the two scores between the three of you. Uh, Dickie and Dave on 38, looking very strong. Then it's up to 100, where we find Erin and Dave and Mark and Jim. So, yes, Dave and Jim, it's between the pair of you. Best of luck. We're going to come back down the line now. Can the second players please step up to the podium? OK, Dave, we're looking for any cast member featured in either of these photographs. And obviously you're going to try and find the one you think the fewest of our 100 people knew. Look at that. Dickie's left you in a very strong position. The high scorers jointly on 100. You're on 38. 61 or less gets you through. It kind of plays right into my wheelhouse because they're both favourite films of mine. I'm thinking I might have a shot at a pointless... Horst Buchholst. Horst Buchholst. Horst Buckholst. Here comes your red line. Let's see if Horst Buckholst can get you below that. Let's see if Horst Buckholst can get you a pointless answer. That'd be fantastic. Uh, is it right? How many people said it? It's right. You're in the head-to-head, -head, Dave and Dickey. And that scores you two. Oh, that's a great answer, though, Dave. I'm sorry it didn't net you a £250 bonus for the jackpot, but it takes your total up to 40 Very well done. Very well played, Dave. Erin, if only you'd made up the name Horst Buckholz. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and there he is in the, uh, in the Magnificent Seven. Uh, thanks very much, Richard. Dave, now, as I said, it's between you and Jim. How well do you know either of these films? Uh, the top film, not at all. Uh... The one on the bottom, I think I know a couple, I think. I'm going to go for James Coburn. James Coburn. It says, Dave, let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said James Coburn. It's right. <laughs> 
14. Very well done indeed, Dave. 14 for James Coburn. Well played, Dave. Yeah, there he is. Uh, the unmistakable figure of James Coburn. Do you know Chris Evans bought James Coburn's car for £5.5 million? Pounds? I do now. That's, yeah. that's a car. <laughs> I think what sort of car was it? Uh, mini. <laughs> that's a Ferrari, apparently. At the, at the time, it was the most expensive car ever, ever bought. Uh, thanks very much indeed. Now, Jim, you have a target. I do. You have a target. You also have, courtesy of Dave Vale over there, you have an indication of the kind of name we're looking for. If you want to score under 14. Might be tricky. I know a few names. The only other member... I knew McQueen and Coburn. The only other one I can name is Yul Brynner. Uh, for Reservoir Dogs, I can pick out... There's Tim Roth, Michael Madsen and Quentin Tarantino himself up there. I'm going to hope that people have forgotten that Quentin Tarantino is in his own film. So let's say Quentin Tarantino. Quentin Tarantino. Now, here's your red line. 13 or less is really what you want. Let's find out how many people said Quentin Tarantino. He's right. Still going down, Jim. Still going down. Oh, no! 15! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, Jim, I'm really sorry. That's a great answer, and I think very, very <laughs> well thought through as well. You needed 14 to tie. I'm afraid you got 15. That's so unfair. Oh, not unfair. It's just unfortunate. So close. Deserved. 115. <laughs> Deserved. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Jim, uh, that was so unlucky. Uh, really, really well played. The other two answers um, you could have given me. Uh, Tim Roth, you said, would have scored 18. OK. Michael Madsen. Oh, no, don't. Don't. Yeah. OK, I won't tell you. <laughs> Michael Madsen would have scored 16. Oh. So all three of them. There's other names up there that you'll know, and you're right, if you've, if you've got the guy in the shell suit, uh, you'd be laughing. Let's go through both of the pictures. We'll start with Magnificent Seven. We've already had the, uh, one of the best answers there, Horst Buchholz. You could also have had Brad Dexter, who would have scored you two. There's Brad Dexter. Uh, there's Robert Vaughan, who would have scored you 12, still on British TV now, of course. Uh, Charles Bronson, who would have scored you 14. And the only other one we haven't had on that picture is Yul Brynner. He would have scored you 54 points. No point going for Yul Brynner. Uh, but uh, well done if you got it home. Much better than scoring 100 points. Uh, the top one, there is a pointless answer in there. Uh, he played crime boss Joe Cabot, and he's obscured there. Uh, the bald guy obscured there is Lawrence Tierney. Very, very well done if you said him. Uh, on your far right, there's another very good answer, also very well known as, a, as an author. It's Eddie Bunker, and he would have scored you one point. Now, the man in the shell suit, Sean Penn's brother, mm. Chris Penn. Chris Penn. Chris Penn would have scored you eight points. Steve Buscemi, Steve Buscemi, he would have scored 15 points. And Harvey Keitel was the only one left. He would have scored you 21 points. Very well done to anyone who got a pointless answer there. Um, well, well done to anyone who didn't get 100. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. Uh, so, at the end of our second round, I'm afraid... Oh, it's Jim and Mark, head-to-head -head last time. I know, an audible ah oh, from the audience. <laughs> we've really enjoyed having you on the show. It's been great fun. And frankly, every time we've had to ask you something, Jim, you've been priceless. So uh, <laughs> I'm really sorry. It's just great. I could listen to Jim talking for days. It'd be just brilliant. Come, come back another time under, a, under an assumed name. I'll try my best. Um, anyway, great to have you here on the show, Jim and Mark. Thanks so much for playing. Thank you. But for the remaining two pairs, it's now time for the head to head. Congratulations, Dickie and Dave V, Erin and Dave H. You are now one step closer to the final and a chance to play for our jackpot, which currently stands at £2,500. <laughs> well, now we have to decide who's going to play for that money, and to do that, you're now going to go head-to-head. -head. The difference is you're now allowed to confer. And the first pair to win two questions will be playing for the jackpot. Very, very best of luck to both pairs. Let's play the head-to-head. OK, here comes your first question, and it concerns Dan Brown novels. Dan Brown novels, Richard. We're going to give you the names of five Dan Brown novels now, but we're only showing you the number of letters in each word. Can you tell us what the novels are, please? Very, very best of luck. Thanks very much indeed. OK, let's reveal our five Dan Brown novels, and here they are. 3254, 95, 346, 787. I'll read them one last time. Three, two, five, four, nine, five, three, four, six, seven, eight, 
and seven. There we are. Now, Dickie and Dave, you've played best throughout the show so far, so you get to go first. Right. <laughs> I'm hoping I'm counting these letters right. I'm Me gonna too. go for nine and five, deception point. Deception point, say Dickie and Dave. Deception point. Now then, Erin and Dave. He sounds like he knows, doesn't he? Yeah. <laughs> um, do you want to talk us through the other ones? We'd like to, but we can't. <laughs> we only know the top one. Um, so, yeah, we've got no choice. We might be higher. The Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code. OK, well, Dickie and Dave said deception point. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many of our 100 people said it. He's right. For deception point, very well done indeed. Erin <laughs> and Dave H, meanwhile, have gone for the Da Vinci Code. Let's see if that's right. And if it is, let's see how many people said the Da Vinci Code. It's right. 41. <laughs> very well done, Dickie and Dave Vale. After one question, you are up 1 0. Yeah, well played. It's a thriller about a scientific discovery in the Arctic Circle. Deception point. Let's uh, go through the rest of these. The next one down um, was The Lost Symbol. We scored you 11 points about a forgetful drummer. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh... Uh, the next one down is Digital Fortress. We we'll scored you six points. And the bottom one uh, released in 2013, Inferno. And that would have scored 16 points. So, Digital Fortress, best answer on the board. Thanks very much indeed. OK, here comes your second question. Erin and Dave H, you get to answer this one first, but you have to win it to stay in the game, so best of luck. It concerns... Elvis songs. Elvis songs, Richard. I'm going to show you five picture clues now to uh, the titles of Elvis' top 40 singles. We need you to give us the title of the song these... Uh, Clues most closely represent, please. Very best of luck. Thanks very much. OK, let's reveal our five picture clues to Elvis songs, and here they come. A. B. C. D. And E. OK. Aaron and Dave H, you will go first. I don't know. What's the heart? Heart. Broken. Love. I'd have to go jazz rock. Yeah, you say it. You say it. OK. OK, we're going to go for E, Jailhouse Rock. E, Jailhouse Rock. Now then, Dickie and Dave V. Can you talk us through that board, do you think? Uh, pretty much, yeah. Uh, we weren't sure on the first one, actually. Uh, the second one... Wooden Heart. Wooden Heart. Blue Suede Shoes and Surrender, obviously, that one there. So, what do you reckon? I say Wooden Heart. Yep. Yep. Go for wooden, B, B wooden, wooden Heart, please. OK, Wooden Heart, say Dickie and Dave V. So we have Jailhouse Rock versus Wooden Heart. Erin and Dave H said Jailhouse Rock. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said it. Is right. 50. 50 for Chell House Rock. Dickie and Dave V have gone for Wooden Heart. Let's see if that's right. Let's see how many people said that. Is right. If this goes below 50, you are through. Yes, you are. There we are, 45. Not a lot in it, but Dickie and Dave V, after only two questions, you are through to the final 2 0. Yes, well played, gents. Let's fill in the rest of this board. A, a uh, very minor hit for Elvis, was Mystery Train. Would have scored you two points. C is Blue Suede Shoes. Uh, only scored 86. I thought it might score a few more than that, but 86 points for Blue Suede Shoes. And D is Surrender. Would have been a better answer, actually. Would have scored you 23 points. Thanks very much indeed, Richard. OK, there we are. So the pair leaving us at the end of the head-to-head. -head. I'm afraid it's Erin and Dave. This is great news for us, though, because it means we get to see you again next time. You'll come back. Maybe you'll go even further. But uh, it's been great having you on the show. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Erin and Dave. Thank you. But for Dickie and Dave V, it's now time for our pointless final.
Congratulations, Dickie and Dave. You've fought off all the competition and you've won our coveted pointless trophy. You now have a chance to win our pointless jackpot, and at the end of today's show, the jackpot stands at £2,500. <laughs> so there you are, among the many trophies you will have to celebrate, to show for your 20 years of friendship. There you are, you've now got a pointless one to add to that. You've done so well today. Really, really good answers. Horst Buckhorst, I'm sorry <laughs> you didn't get a pointless... Uh, I'm sorry that didn't score zero for you. Uh, but it, it, it did most of the way. It shows you what wasting your life watching cowboys can do. <laughs> yeah. And reading Dan Brown, Deception Point. Well, I, Great I, things I've to I've only ever read thing. one, uh, and I thought it was rubbish, so... <laughs> 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 well, listen, what would you like to see come up in this round? I mean, you've been quite lucky. I say quite lucky. Things have fallen pretty well for you so far. Things have fallen in our laps, so I think... Yeah. Let, let the gods throw them as they may. Well, as always, you kick this round off by choosing your category, and here are your four options. They are... Roaring Twenties, Monty Python, Sporting Finals, Belgium. Belgium. <laughs> well, there's one that sticks out to me. I reckon Monty Python and Sporting Finals are going to be your... I'm thinking Monty Python, to be honest. So my, my Belgium knowledge, I'll stand aside <laughs> so you can go ahead with those two, maybe. <laughs> your waffle knowledge. <laughs> yeah, that's right, yeah. Yeah, Monty Python, please. OK, Monty Python it is. Let's take a look at your three options, guys. Very, very different options. We're looking for any cheese mentioned in the famous cheese shop sketch. So the original cheese shop sketch, any cheese mentioned in that? It's hard to say cheese shop sketch. <laughs> uh, oh, this is easier. Any film directed by Terry Gilliam? There's always no short films, no TV films, no documentaries, anything like that. Uh, or any country visited by Michael Palin in Around the World in 80 Days. So any country he actually uh, stops in in Around the World in 80 Days is always by country. We mean a sovereign state that's a member of the UN. So any cheese shop sketch cheese? Uh, any film directed by Terry Gilliam or any Around the World in 80 Days country? Very, very best of luck, guys. Thanks very much indeed. Now, as always, you've got up to one minute to come up with three answers, and all you need to win that jackpot is for just one of those answers to be pointless. Now, remember, the answers you provide can come from any of these categories, and how you spread them across the categories is entirely up to you. They can all come from the same one, if you like, or two from one, one from another, completely up to you. Are you ready? Yes. OK, let's put 60 seconds on the clock. There they are. Your time starts now. OK, what I think I might do, Dave, is go off, have a nice cup of Horlicks right. and let you carry on with it, because... <laughs> it's filmed by uh, Brazil, um, Time Bandits, 12 Monkeys... Um, I can't think of any other ones. It did, it did one about Don Quixote. Um, I've got a cheese as well, Yag. I think we should go for that. Yag? Yag. It's, a, it's, it's, the, it's Trust me, it's in the... I'm sure it's in the sketch. It is a cheese. It is a cheese and it's in the sketch. I'm sure it's in the sketch. Right. Um, okay. Just trying to think of some more films by Terry Gilliam. Um, Brazil, Time Bandits, uh, the one, the Arthurian one in New York, Fisher King. So, so Fisher King and the Time Bandits and Yarg. You are so good. Ten seconds left. Yeah, we'll do that. Okay. 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 You're happy with those? Yes. Very well done. Well, we will stop the clock there. Uh, what are your three answers going to be? Right, we've got two answers from films by Terry Gilliam. And they are? Uh, the Fisher King. The Fisher King. And Time Bandits. And Time Bandits. And a cheese from the cheese shop sketch. It's not easy to say that. <laughs> <it's not. laughs> uh, Yarg. Yarg. Of those three, which is your best shot at a pointless answer? I think Yarg. If it's right, I think that might be pointless. OK, Yarg we will put last. Least likely to be pointless. I'm thinking the Time Bandits. Okay, I'm not time even sure bandits. It's, it's by Terry Gilliam now. It might be. Oh, we'll give it a go. I sounded really convincing, though, didn't I? You did, I, I fell for it. <laughs> we'll put Time Bandits first. OK, let's pop those answers up on the board in that order, and here they are. We have got Time Bandits, The Fisher King and Yarg. Well, very best of luck. Your first answer was The Time Bandits. Now, remember, only one of these answers has to be correct for you to win that jackpot. £2,500. Quite a nice jackpot. What would you what would you do with your share of that, Dickie? Um, well, uh, me and my wife, uh, hopefully, all being well, uh, buying our first home soon, and the kitchen needs a little bit of tweaking, so uh, we'd probably put some towards that. And also, there's a little charity we support down Salisbury Way, and we're, we're going to give a little bit to them as well. 
Very good. Uh, Dave, how about you? Be a heavy metal of women. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you get a clap for that. <laughs> <sighs> OK, very, very best of luck. So, your first answer was the Time Bandits. Let's find out. Obviously, it has to be correct, then it has to be pointless for you to win that jackpot. Let's find out, for £2,500, how many of our 100 people thought Time Bandits was a Terry Gilliam film? <laughs> it's right. If this goes all the way down to zero, you'll be leaving here with £2,500. It's still going down six. Six. Of course, it's a Terry Gilliam film. Is that terrible? You just start to doubt yeah, everything I, I when doubt you're standing there. I know. <laughs> happens all the time. I mean, I don't know with you, but it does. Oh, standing here. Um, OK, not a pointless answer. Only two more shots at today's jackpot. Your second answer was The Fisher King, another Terry Gilliam film. Let's find out if it's correct. Let's find out if it's pointless. For £2,500, how many people said The Fisher King? Well, it's right. Your first answer, Time Bandits, took us all the way down to six. Your second answer, The Fisher King, takes us down through the teens and into single figures. It passes six, still going down, down it goes. You did it! That's brilliant. <laughs> Superb. <laughs> oh, congratulations, Dickie and Dave Vale. Fisher King was a pointless answer, which means you go home with our jackpot of 2,500. Very well done, Dickie. That was great, wasn't it? Congratulations, guys. Very, very well deserved. It's been great fun having you on the show. If we'd had to use your last answer, Yarg, would have scored you 100 points. Not in the sketch, I'm afraid, yeah. Yarg. Yeah. <laughs> There's plenty of cheeses that are, though. Let's start with those as we look at our pointless answers. You could have had uh, Kefili, you could have had Danish Blue, Limburger, the Smoked Austrian, there's Borsan, there's Dorset Blue Vinny. There's Emmental, there's Lancashire, Norwegian Jarlsberger, Port Salut, Red Windsor, White Stilton, and of course Venezuelan beaver cheese. <laughs> all of those, all of those were pointless answers. Uh, let's take a look at the Terry Gilliam films. Three big films, actually. Fear and Loathing in Las Vegas was a pointless answer, uh, and The Adventures of Baron Munchausen was a pointless answer as well. And there's The Fisher King. Well done if you said any of those. And countries visited by Michael Palin, there's only four pointless answers. Austria, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Very well done if you've got a pointless answer at home. Thanks very much indeed. Well, thanks once again to our winning players, Dickie and Dave, who go away with today's jackpot of £2,500. Very well done indeed. <laughs> Join us next time when we'll be putting more obscure knowledge to the test on Pointless. Meanwhile, it's goodbye from Richard. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye.